Hello, and welcome to episode two of Middleware Friday for January 13th, 2017. My name's Kent Weir, and I'm here to talk to you today about Azure Logic Apps and the Service Bus Peak Lock Pattern. So in this episode, we're going to focus on our feature content, which is Azure Logic Apps and Service Bus Peak Lock, and we'll also take a quick look at some community content. So first off, some background about service bus receive modes. So there are two modes that are available. The first one is peak lock, which is the default. Now when operating in this mode, the client will send a request to receive a message from service bus. After the client has received the message, it sends a request to complete the message. You can kind of think of it as a two-phase commit. In order to avoid a poison message, so a message that's unable to be processed, Dead letter semantics are required to move that message away from the main processing stream and off into a dead letter queue. Now you may want to use this particular mode when you want downstream message durability. Now the alternative is to use receive and delete. Now this is the base behavior of the BizTalk service bus messaging adapter. Now with receive and delete, both steps are combined into a single request. This will reduce the overall number of operations and can improve the overall message throughput. The performance gain comes at the risk of losing messages though. A little bit more information about dead letter queues. Service bus queues and topic subscriptions provide a secondary sub queue called the dead letter queue. The dead letter queue does not need to be explicitly created and cannot be deleted or otherwise managed independently of the main entity. The purpose of the dead letter queue is to hold messages that cannot be delivered to any receiver or simply messages that cannot be processed. Messages can be removed from the dead letter queue and inspected. An application might, with the help of an operator, correct issues and resubmit the message. Log the fact that there was an error and or take corrective action. So this was taken directly from the Microsoft documentation but we'll see as part of this peak lock pattern how the dead letter queue plays an important role in processing messages when you may have a downstream error. So let's now get into a demo. So I've logged into the Azure portal. I'm in the Logic App section. Now I just want to show you something first before we get into the actual demo itself. So I've created a, a blank Logic App and when you create a blank logic app, you have the ability to choose a template. Now these are templates that are provided by Microsoft. You can think of them really as accelerators. And there's a couple templates that are of interest to us. And those are related to peak lock, receive, and peak lock receive with exception handling. So what happens is I can go ahead and click on this template. It gives me a little bit more information about it. I can then go ahead and use this template and it's going to wire up a few different cards for us. Now I've actually have a, a working sample so let's jump back to that instead. And this is my peak lock sample here. I'm going to enable it. And then I'm going to edit it. Now for the purpose of this demo I have a connector which is going to connect to service bus and it's going to connect to a queue called peak lock and it's going to check for items every 10 minutes. Now obviously mileage may vary, you can choose to have a much lower frequency if you wish. Next what's going to happen is I'm going to have a delay shape. Now the reason for this delay shape is I want to just prove that this is actually working. Because what happens is at this point when I go ahead to receive the message I'm essentially putting on a lock on that message. Now when you go ahead and create a queue, there's going to be a lock duration setting, which in this case is set to one minute. If I don't actually complete that message, what will happen is that lock will disappear. The message will be made available on the queue for another consumer to actually pick it up. So what will happen here is we're going to have a delay. It'll take 20 seconds and we'll actually be able to see the counter and then what will happen is after 20 seconds we're going to go ahead and complete the message in the queue. We're going to pass the lock token from the request message and then just for fun we're going to go ahead and send an email. I'm now in Service Bus Explorer. 
it wouldn't be a service bus demo if service bus explorer wasn't used for those that are not familiar with service bus explorer it's a tool written by Paulo and it allows you to connect to service bus queues topics event hubs and relays essentially almost as a test harness where you can submit messages receive messages things of that nature so I've now connected to my queue called peak lock I have a very simple message here I can go ahead and send a message I'm just gonna change this to be hello queue going to go ahead and click start we're gonna see that a message has been sent I can come over back to the other screen hit refresh and we see, we'll see we have a message here sitting in our queue now back over to logic apps and I'm gonna go ahead and run now this is a pretty cool feature of logic apps it's fairly recent in the sense that we can now go ahead and click run and see it being debugged in real time now notice we have a delay going on here and it's counting up If we head back over to service bus explorer we'll do a refresh and we see that we still have a message now we'll just wait a couple more seconds and if we go ahead and refresh we see that the message has been consumed head back over to logic apps and sure enough we see that the message has been completed and an email has been sent now over in my email and sure enough we can see the message hello queue so that works well uh, what we what we've proved is that a message can be essentially copied off of the queue we're then can perform some logic now for the sake of this demo we just have a delay shape but we could go ahead and call out to one or more systems knowing that the message is still safe inside of logic apps until we're ready to complete the message and that's what's happened after our delay we complete the message and then we're done so I'm going to close out of this I'm going to disable it just because the next demo also uses the same queue and in this case we're going to take a look at a peak lock exception so let's enable this logic app let's go ahead and edit it now the difference here is that we've got a scope and within this scope we're just going to call a very simple HTTP endpoint now in this case this is just my blog uh, we're not going to do anything with the content uh, this is more this is not really isn't the focus of the actual demo but we've got two paths here we have the happy path where if this HTTP call is successful if it returns success we're gonna go ahead and complete the message that's in the queue in the event it's unsuccessful or it's failed we're gonna go down this alternative path and in this path we're gonna actually move that message over to the dead letter queue so once again back to service bus explorer we are going to send a message in this case it'll go through the same we'll use the same message body and we'll go ahead and start this head back to logic apps and then let's go ahead and run this and this one will be much quicker since we don't have the delay and now we can see that we received the message successfully we made a call to this HTTP endpoint we can see that it was a status code of 200 and then next we can see that the message was completed in the queue we head back to service bus explorer we go ahead and refresh and sure enough it's empty so let's now make this fail let's go back to the designer go into the HTTP connector we're essentially going to make an invalid URL let's go ahead and save this it's now been saved let's head back to our service bus explorer we'll send a message we're going to change this payload and say dead letter we'll go ahead and click start hit close head back to logic apps go ahead and run this and we can now see that we've hit the scope it's failed 
as it should, 404 document doesn't exist. And then what happens is we actually head down the exception handling path. And in this case, what's happened is we've gone ahead and passed the lock token of the message and the message has been moved over to the dead letter queue. So let's just validate that. Let's refresh. And sure enough, we can see that there's one in the dead letter queue. We can go ahead and receive it for the, as we mentioned before, there's two receive modes. Let's go ahead and receive and delete in this case. And sure enough, we can see that we've received the message of hello dead letter. So let's briefly talk about logic app exceptions. Now with logic apps, we can use the run after property to catch failures. And this is coming from the Microsoft documentation. Each logic app action declares which act need to complete before the action will start. You can think of this as the ordering of steps in your workflow. This ordering is known as the run after property in the action definition. It is an object that describes which actions and action statuses would execute the action. By default, all actions added through the designer are set to run after the previous step if the previous step was succeeded. So let's take a closer look at this. As you recall, we had a scope and within the scope we had an HTTP connection and then there was really two paths. One was complete the message in a queue path over here and the other path was dead letter the message in a queue path. If we go ahead and take a look at the code view of our actual logic app, we're going to see two actions here. We're going to see the complete the message in a queue, so the happy path. And we can see that this action should run after our scope when its return succeeded. Alternatively, we also have the dead letter, the message in a queue action. And in this case, it runs after the scope when it failed. So this is why when we changed the URL for the blog site and it returned a 404, it actually returned a failed status. And that's what us allowed us to go down the exception path in which we actually dead lettered the message in the queue. So just to close the loop on the service bus connector, with Logic Apps, we do have the ability to use the autocomplete or the receive and delete mode as well. So when you go inside of Logic Apps and you do a search for Service Bus, you're going to find a lot of different options as to which mode you can use, whether or not you're going to be receiving from a topic or receiving from a queue. There's also some options around batching of messages. So when one or more messages arrive, you can go ahead and use these methods as well. Perhaps we'll take a closer look at the batch messages option in a future episode of Middleware Friday. Moving on to the community content section of this episode. This particular blog post caught my eye. It was, I saw it on Twitter and it uh, surfaced right around the holidays and then I saw some retweets but I thought it was worth checking out and that was around 10 things to learn over the holiday break inevitably links you to this particular page. On this page, Microsoft, more specifically Nicole Herskowitz, hopefully I got that right, walks through 10 different topics that developers should be familiar with these days. And I would have to agree with many on this list, including Internet of Things, Azure Functions, so there's the opportunity to watch, read, and then do. Cognitive services, I'm a big fan of cognitive services ever since attending Ignite earlier this year. So I would definitely check cognitive services out. Also the bot service, uh, shameless plug, I did write an InfoQ article about Microsoft launching cloud bot as a service platform. So you can go ahead and, and find that story on InfoQ.com. Next, we've got container service, of course, our favorite iPaaS platform, Logic Apps, and some of the recent news around the Enterprise Integration Pack. That went GA just prior to Christmas, 
So go ahead and check that out with John Fancy from the product group. We also have API apps. You, when you think of API apps, they're really connectors. Well, they can be connectors and pl easily plugged in to Azure Logic Apps, so that's cool. We've got Document DB, Mobile Center, and Application Insights for some telemetry for your APIs, web applications, etc. Next, as in the previous episode, feedback is welcome. This is a vlog for the community, by the community. So certainly if there's topics that you would like to see explored or some guest presenters, feel free to let me know through one of these channels. Credits, the music today was uh, found on SoundCloud once again. It's from DJ Ghost, and it's called the Clean Hip Hop Mix. Lastly, thanks for watching and thank you for BizTalk360 for making this vlog happen.